and happy Wisdom Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in and for choosing to spend some of your time with me. I'm Maria Milagros Vasquez, and this is a space that I like to carve out on the interweb to share tips, tools, techniques, nuggets as a storyteller, as a personal growth and development trainer, as a motivational speaker, as a life coach, as a mom, right? As a fellow human, I have found that there are some tips and techniques and tools that were really beneficial for me to help me create a healthier and happier life. So I wanted to start a little series for the rest of this year where I am going to be sharing one tip per week. And this week we are talking about sleep. I do that with my niece. She thinks it's hilarious. I like, I don't know why she thinks it's funny, but anyways, let's focus. So, um, I want to talk about sleep because If you've watched my videos at all, you know I talk about the importance of meeting our basic needs, right? Have you eaten enough? Have you eaten, you know, some healthy foods that are nourishing your body? Are you drinking enough water? Did you get a good night's sleep? Are you moving your body? Did you get your vitamin D? Blah, 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 blah. And the reason why is because our physiology, what's happening in our body, is so tied into our psychology, what's happening in our mind. I had a client, um, a, she's a relatively new client a couple months ago, and of all the things that she wanted to talk about, the thing that was on her list that had to do with her physiology was sleep. So I said to her, I really want to start there. And she says something along the lines of, with all due respect, of all the things that I want to talk about, that's where you want to start? And I said, yeah, absolutely, because it's a basic human need. And if you're not meeting that basic human need, it greatly impacts how you are capable of showing up for and holding room for all the other emotional and mental work that you're going to be embarking on, right? And she's like, okay, you're the coach. I trust you. But I could tell she was a little bit like, what? So we talked a little bit about sleep. And then you know, like maybe you don't. I'm not just going to assume that everybody knows. Some of the most basic tips is don't eat an hour before you go to bed because your body is trying to uh, metabolize and digest. And that's just a lot of work that you're asking your body to do. And then it's also trying to shut down and go to sleep. Um, Don't consume sugars right before bed. If you have a cup of tea, you know, go easy on the sugar and even honey and just please make sure it's not caffeinated. Um, and the electronics and devices and screens, shut off devices, screens, and electronics at least up to 30 minutes before you go to bed. So you can start to deactivate some of the overstimulation that's happening in your brain, right? So those are some of like the baseline things. Now I, I grew, when I was younger, I don't say I grew up in insomnia. What? What? When I was younger, I did battle with insomnia because in my dreams was where I would replay some of my stuff, right? Or it would like replay in really creepy, scary ways. And so I, of course, avoided sleep because it was not my friend. And it was through the course of therapy that I was able to have insight about those things, recognize that I'm safe right now in this moment, and then start to, you know, do the work. But Even when I was getting older and I had, you know, really overcome a lot of that stuff and dealt with a lot of that stuff, I was still having a really hard time shutting my brain down because for years I had programmed myself to not rest, right? And whether you have a traumatic history or not, basically we program ourselves to not rest. We wait until we're absolutely exhausted before we allow ourselves to sleep. And what's happening during the course of our day will play into how or how we will or will not fall asleep and whether or not we can get that deep sleep that we want. I heard recently a woman, I can't remember her name or where I heard it exactly, but a woman was like the spiritual kind of guru and she was answering questions and someone asked about sleep and her, she cut the woman off that was asking the question and said to her, your, um, most people do not have sleep because they do not have peace. Find your peace and you will find your sleep. And I was like, Ooh, yummy. But what happens when I can't find my peace during the day, right? Does that mean I definitely don't get any sleep? Because then it becomes a cycle. So how can I target sleeping and create a stronger foundation for rest so that when I wake up, I have the capacity in the room to deal with the the other stuff and to actually have the room to want to create my peace, right? So you can do it one way or you can do it the other. Um, for this particular video, I want to talk about doing it from the sleep perspective first. So 
what I recommended to this particular client was your basics, right? The no, sh- cut back on the sugar, don't eat too late, you know, blah, 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 the electronics, those things. And then, and there are tons of other tips and rules and things that you can do to help create a space and a room that's more conducive to rest. Okay. White noise, blackout curtains, shutting off all the lights, you know, a bunch of stuff. You can Google that and look so many things, so many things that you can do. And the beauty about this particular work is that we get to play. I always say to my clients, and I even say it when I'm teaching at the gym, there's nothing serious happening here. This is just playtime. We're just playing because when we think of it as just playing, it's exploration. What works for me? What doesn't? What, what feels good and brings me joy and peace and ease and what doesn't? And what doesn't, leave it. That's not for you, right? That's why there's so many tips because Somebody else can pick that up and that might work perfect for them and it might not necessarily work for you and that's okay, but you would not have known until you played and explored, right? We're just playing here. We're just playing. So um, I, I asked her also to think about how she can dump because for me, I know when I was dealing with insomnia, one of the things was I couldn't shut my brain off from all the things that I felt like I didn't get done or had to do the next day. So what I started doing was brain dumping. I just have a journal near my bed and a pen Always. I actually have a pack of pens in the drawer and it's not in the drawer. It's sitting right on a journal and a pen, not something that I have to unwrap and undo and pull the tab, just like a notepad, really easy on a clean page. And what I always do is I put the date, I sit it there, I go to bed. And if I, as I'm falling asleep, I start to think of all these things. I will just grab that notepad and create bullet points boom, 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 and dump it all on a piece of paper. And by doing that, I'm like telling my brain basically what you're sharing is important, right? And what, where, what you're thinking about is necessary and I don't want to forget it. So I'm writing it down and I can put my eyes on it in the morning, but right now we need to rest so that we can deal with this stuff in the morning. And it felt like I was having this conversation. And the truth is sometimes I actually had that conversation with my brain. And in doing so, I found that my brain was like, okay, it, we got it captured somewhere. We don't have to keep rethinking about it. Um, one of my other clients, she does this through a video dump. She'll put on video, talk to herself, dump it all, tell her brain she's amazing and I appreciate you and thank you for reminding me of all these things and then puts her phone away and like she said it stopped her brain because one way or another, you got to get it out of your head in order to stop that reel from playing over and over and over. And then the other thing that I'm going to recommend is that you develop a mantra. My mantra is when I'm falling asleep, I inhale and I say peaceful sleep and I exhale and I say happy dreams. I inhale peaceful sleep and I exhale happy dreams. And sometimes in between, I'll get the sprinkle of you are deserving and worthy of peaceful sleep and happy dreams. And when I first started doing the mantra, Maybe, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 times I would say it. I'm not kidding. Minutes on end. And now it's like two or three times. I do my brain dump. Well, I do a little slight meditation for about five minutes before I go to bed. If anything comes up, I do a brain dump. I lay down. I get myself all cozy coz. I start my breathing. I'm out. I'm out for the count. And then I don't wake up until my alarm goes off and, or my daughter goes, mommy, that's it. The, the, there could be fire trucks passing by the street. There could be madness happening. I don't hear anything but my daughter and my alarm. So I'm, I'm giving this to you just as a, a place to play, right? How can you find ways, tips, tools, techniques that can help you improve both falling asleep and then the quality of your sleep and actually staying asleep so that you have the capacity to create healthy and happy life throughout the course of your day? Because you know, you know, if you don't have a good night's sleep, You are neither healthy nor happy for yourself or anybody else. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I know when I have not had, I haven't had a good night's sleep, I try to avoid as much human contact as possible because I, mm -mm, no. So sleep is important to me. I set my time. I have an alarm on my phone and it does like a soft little lullaby. I was like, Ooh, got to get ready for bed. Shut off my devices, finish up whatever I'm doing, you know? And then I start going through my nighttime routine. It's not just for babies. It's for adults too. And we forget that we create that for children. And then we think that we have to grind ourselves into the last minute until we're exhausted and we pass out. That's not healthy or happy, right? So if you know someone who can benefit from it, please go ahead and share it. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down. Share with me in the comments what works for you in terms of sleep. What helps you either fall asleep or stay asleep in a holistic kind of way, right? So let me know. I'll talk to you soon. This is, I love you. I'm sending you love and light. There's nothing you can do about that. Peace. Peace.